Hey everybody, today we're getting into best critical regions. We're going to do a general overview, what they are, what they're good for, and in the next video we'll get into the main tool for computing them, the very important Neiman Pearson moment. So, so far we've had three sorts of critical regions, uh, a left-handed, a right-handed, and a two-sided. And we just picked them to correspond to alternative hypotheses, and we didn't really talk about why they might be justified beyond just those sort of real-world considerations. Um, so we're going to get into that now. So first, the definition. We're testing some null hypothesis, mu equals mu naught, by collecting a random sample of size n. And we're going to define a critical region of size alpha just to be a set in Rn of size alpha. So the probability of randomly selecting a point from Rn that's in that region is going to be alpha. And if you think about that in terms of the significance testing we've already done, where we had a right tail or a left tail or a two-sided tail um, of size alpha, this fits. Now, if we have a PDF for the variable x that we're taking a sample from, we can write a joint PDF and write that probability statement as an integral. So there you go. All right, let's do a quick example. Um, we're looking at the critical region here, x bar less than or equal to 50. And now we want to think about that not in terms of just the distribution of x bar, but in terms of the distribution of x1 and x2, the joint distribution. So here's the set. Let's draw it. It's going to be uh, a half plane separated by the line y equals um, 100 minus x. So we talk a lot about the size of a set. Um, and wanting the size to be alpha, we have to remember this is size in a probabilistic sense. So we're taking an integral over that region, but always weighting it by that joint PDF. OK, so there's many different um, sets in Rn that are going to have that size alpha. How do we pick one that's going to be a good critical region for our test? The answer is that we want to maximize the statistical power. That is, we want to maximize the likelihood of rejecting H0 when the alternative hypothesis is true. Now, that's a little bit problematic because the power of a test always depends on the true parameter mu. So we're going to have to specify that mu somehow. The one very common and important way of doing this is just by writing our hypotheses as what we call simple alternative hypotheses and a, null, a simple null hypothesis. So here I've got them both written as equalities when in the past the alternative hypothesis would have been written as some sort of inequality. So you can think about this as there's some unknown distribution with a, a parameter mu and that parameter mu can only have two values or only two values that we're interested in and trying to distinguish between. So we're ready to define a best critical region. We're still considering those simple hypotheses, mu equal mu naught and mu equal mu a. A best critical region of size alpha is going to be <laughs> a region of size alpha. So the probability, when the null hypothesis is true, of randomly picking a point in C is alpha. And it's going to have to be the most powerful region. That is, that if we have any other region, the probability of grabbing a point in D um, given the alternative hypothesis, is going to be greater for C than for D. To say it a little bit more succinctly, C maximizes the likelihood of rejecting H0 when HA is true. Let's have a, a really simple example here. So we've got a null hypothesis that a population mean is 50. So maybe we're really interested in testing an alternative hypothesis that it's greater than 50. Um, we would have set up a critical region to test that. Um, if we're talking about a sample of size 22 from a normal distribution with standard deviation 5 and significance level alpha, the critical region for an alternative hypothesis of mu greater than 50 would have been what I have here written as C, x bar greater than or equal to 51.75. That's just the way we have worked in the past, just sort of on faith. So let's pick another region, one that honestly, we know is wrong going in, and work with it and compare the two from this new perspective. So I'm setting D equals the idea that X bar is less than or equal to 48.25. So 
looking at the wrong tail, essentially. So under the null hypothesis, the probability of points landing in C and D are, are the same. Um, they're both 5%. So these are both critical regions of size 0.05. Let's compute statistical power, assuming mu is um, 52. So they're similar calculations, but notice now I have assumed that that population mean is 52. Now we're assuming the alternative hypothesis. The probability of a point landing in C giving the alternative hypothesis is 0.59. Um, so a statistical power of almost 60%. On the other hand, assuming the alternative hypothesis mu equal 52, a pro the probability of a point landing in D is 0 0.0003, so much, much smaller. Clearly, C is the much better choice here. 